Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jess Marshall Podcast. Today, I'm very excited to have Thomas Keenan of Break Free Academy and Step It Up Entrepreneur Podcast, as well as author of Unfuck Your Business. You heard it right. I hope you enjoy the podcast. We're going to go over everything from entrepreneurship to mindset, facing adversity, building teams, building culture, the whole nine yards. Hope you enjoy it. I think you will. How long have you been doing the business coaching thing? And did that start with you reaching out to somebody, asking them for their help? Uh, it's cool that you asked that question. So I started as a client at Break Free Academy. Cool. Had my own business, GPS tracking installations. I talk about it in my book. Uh, yeah. We installed technology into fleet right. vehicles. Did that for a while. And I was like, hey, we were working with a coach in New York making some good progress, but I wanted something else, something different. And I was in this crazy guy's Facebook group. It turns out to be Ryan Stuman. Yeah, that sales talk. Yep, sales talk yeah. with sales pros, and yeah. he's off his rocker. <laughs> and, like, dude, I'm, I'm rough around the edge as a New York guy, kind of yeah. speak my mind, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> and, um, dude, we just, we just uh, I, I went up signing up. I get into his low, uh, entry-level program, spend, like, 3K to get in, and start doing the work. A couple months later, I'm on a private jet with this guy. We, we fly down to the Bahamas for a one-day mastermind. End of the event, he's like, dude, he goes, um, I can help you make a lot of money. He goes, this is the, and he like just dropped this game plan out. And he laid out all the numbers. This was going to cost. This is how we're going to do it. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, shit. It really isn't that difficult. Yeah. And he's like, I've, I've done this a, bot, a bunch. It's like, all right, well, what does it take? He goes, you got to come in and, and join me at my higher level program right. and I'll I'll work with you one on one. Nice. It's like, okay, cool. Well, what does that look like? So it wound up wound up being a thirty thousand dollar investment over and above what I had already put in. Yeah. And I was nervous. Like I had I had never spent that much money in one shot. Did you write a check for it? Did you have to go get a no I loan? went I put that sucker on a on a nice platinum Amex. Yeah, like, get, get those fucking get those miles, points. man. Yeah, yeah, those points. So yeah. I got I was a Delta Platinum Amex. I had Delta status. Hells yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's baller right there. Yeah. So it was cool. Uh did that and it was a twelve month long program, twelve month commitment. Uh, right around the eighth month mark, I had completed everything. I had written the book. Book was bestseller. I was being called in to speak on stage in front of people. And through this whole process of me working on me, uh, I kind of realized that I like helping people. Mm. And I like the building part of the business. Um, like my superpower is, is actually integrating. So I'm an integrator. So you may be the visionary in the company, but you don't really connect all the dots and put all the pieces together. I'm the guy who comes in behind the visionary and says, okay, we need to have this talk to this, this talk to this. This is the workflow we're going to put together. We're going to make this more efficient. So I'll come in and fine tune something that's already built. Gotcha. So um, going through this whole process, I start hinting to Stuman. I'm like, hey, uh, you already got one coach in your program now. And he started as a client as well. Uh, I'd like to do that, and I know I'd be good at it. And I'm kind of doing it for free anyway now. People in the lower levels of the program reaching out to me, hey, sure. I'm interested in writing a book. How do I do it? Yeah. What's the marketing behind that look like? You know, or blah, is blah. BFA worth it? All the time. You're closing deals for them All yourself. The yeah, Yeah. so people are coming to me, and I'm giving them a good word and then just kind of handing them off to the sales yeah. team at BFA. And those guys are loving me because I'm just giving them free leads. No left doubt, and right. man. Sold jobs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um, – I guess, you know, a couple months later, Stuman hits me up and he's like, hey, man, uh, you want to come coach my people? I'm like, uh-huh. Yep. I'm very intentional. Yeah. So he may have thought that was his idea. Yeah. But I planted those seeds months before. Sure. And it's just the way I do things. That's I'm awesome. very intentional with what I want and, and I usually get my way. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that from a cocky perspective. Well, the, the, uh, the worst thing about feeling trapped or helpless or or powerless um it that does a lot that does a lot of bad things to people mm -hmm. their headspace right like i mean we've seen a lot of people uh, it, just in big trouble emotionally and mentally over the last year locked into their house they can't get out they don't know what to do they're full yep. of fear all that kind of stuff when you start taking intentional steps and taking action it's 
motherfucking empowering. Hell yeah. Right? So that uh, your intentional approach to life, is that something that you were brought up to have? Or is it something that when you you talk about this pretty pretty uh, transparently in the book, when yeah. you realize, man, I got to get myself squared away to level up, is that when the intentional piece kind of plugged in for you? Um, I don't know. I always kind of had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do. And for the first half of my life, and probably a lot of that was my upbringing, I was very fortunate as a kid to know what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I think that most teenagers don't have that that ability. I knew I wanted to be the world's best car audio installer. Really? I wanted to put badass audio in vehicles, and I wanted to build shit. Nice. That's what I did. Spent 20 years doing it. And after a while, I realized, well, shit, I'm kind of handcuffed here. I can only make so much money. You know, I've built this skill set that's really not that transferable to somebody else. Um, at that point in time, I had crashed and burned the first business to talk about it in the book, yeah. uh, went, went to work for somebody else, got myself back on my feet financially for a couple of years, learned a little bit about life and business and how to really treat people. Um, and at that time I married my wife. This is July, 2009. I get married, right? Life altering event. Okay. Get married. Uh, that's July, September, 2009. I partner up with a gentleman and we kick off top class installations, which is our GPS installation company. I spent the first five years in that business just kind of lollygagging along. Yeah. You know, I wasn't married. I was married, had no kids, no real responsibilities other than two cars in a driveway, a house, and a dog. That was it. Sure. So my wife is like, hey, I'm not getting any younger here. You're going to have kids or what? So we went down that road, tried, 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 nothing, 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 tried, tried, tried. And boom, she comes back one day and she's like, hey, pregnant awesome it's kind of what we've been trying for yeah. we actually planned this on like a lot of couples uh and I actually like my wife still to this day which is cool. there you go yeah. that's a, that's a perk yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um we 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 find out we're having this this daughter who's coming into the world and I guess it's uh my wife's pregnant now maybe three four five months and it was like a lightning bolt fucking hit me hmm. and that right there was like hey dummy it's time for you to grow up and become an adult and start taking things seriously. Hmm. That was when I said, okay. Because now I realized it's not just me, the wife, the two cars in the driveway, and the house and a dog. I have this, this little person that's coming yeah. into the world that I'm responsible for. So if we keep up at this pace, like it's just not going to work. Right. So um, rubbed, uh, rubbed my partner the wrong way real Real big time. He's more old school. Didn't want it. Like, hey, shit's working fine. Let's not rattle the cages. Sure. And I, I'm just a much more progressive person. Uh, so went out there, you know, looked into, hey, who can we hire to help us grow this business? Who can we hire to teach us how to set goals and how to systematize everything? And uh, went out there looking. We settled on this dude, a dude named Richard. I worked with him for a couple months. And I'm a big proponent of a, of a theory called stepping stones. Mm-hmm. Like you, you go in, you step on this stone, you absorb the information and like the talent from that person or situation. And what happens is you, your weight gains and you start to sink that stone. As that stone sinks, you have to pivot and move and get onto the next one. Interesting. So it's kind of like, you know, you have like flyby friends in life. Yeah. You know, it's just, just the way it is. And Richard served his purpose. He came in, and the first thing he said to me was, if you're going to work with me, you're going to read. I hadn't read a book since high school. Mm. So here I am, 35, 36 years old. I had read every instruction manual, installation manual, tech- technical manual that, that had to do with car audio, uh, alarm systems, remote starts, and vehicle electronics for the crap we were installing. Yeah. Other than that. No books. No books. So, you know, first excuse that comes to head is, well, I don't have time to read. And he's like, well, how many hours a day are you sitting in your car? Like, well, shit, let me calculate it. So start doing the math, and we're in the GPS tracking industry, so tracking device in the car, and I start collecting all this data. And over a, a couple of weeks of time, I, I get this data, and I start laying out pro, uh, projections, and I'm doing, on average, thirty six to 40,000 miles a year in my car. Okay, not that much compared to what some people do, but how many hours is that? So now this is where I figure out, oh, I can get back time. Mm. Audiobooks, let's go. So I started doing audiobooks like crazy. And, that, and I, I got through that first book and it just relit the learning or relit uh, my love of learning is the best way to put awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I just, I never stopped since then. That's really cool. Yeah. The uh, absorbing, 
Um, a book listening to it's a little different than reading it. Totally off the page. Did you ever have to loop back and read something you listened to? Go back and kind of freshen up by actually reading it on a Kindle or yep. out of an yeah, absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah, several. I got a couple key books that I actually said, "Oh shit, that book was so great in audio." Let me get the like, physical. Give me an example. Ten X rule. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a tax book. Uh, Tom Wheelwright is the author. Okay. He's one of uh, Robert Kiyosaki's guys. Rich Dad ah. Poor Dad series. Um, tax free wealth. It's called. Cool. And that was a book where I learned a lot about you know hey, structuring entities and why and how to put the money and not put the money. Sure. Still be legal and ethical. Yeah. Uh, but also you know legally put some money back in your pocket instead of sending it to Uncle Sam. Right. So I learned a lot on that book. Uh, so much so, man, it caused a shit storm my partner and our accountant at the time. Really? So I, I went to our accountant and had a meeting. I was like, hey, this book is telling us exactly what to do. Yeah. And this old old school accountant's like, what the fuck is that? It's like, ah, I'm not doing any of that. It's like, okay, cool. Have a nice day. Do you find that one of the one of the fastest litmus tests to figure out if you're like-minded with someone is to talk about their ability to adapt and pivot and change and all of that because mm -hmm. those people who are set in their ways, I don't I don't vibe with those people. Not at all. I vibe with people who are always looking for a better way. Yep. I need a better I wanna I wanna train harder in the gym. I wanna be a better husband. I wanna be better at business. I wanna be a better brother, son, all of those mm -hmm. things. I'm not just satisfied with where I'm at. Yep. When you um when you first start coaching an entrepreneur, a business owner, you coming right at them double barrel with, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna do work, and if you don't do the work, it's isn't gonna work." Yeah. So there's kind of a um, double edged sword there. So a, it's not my business, so I can't tell them to get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, I can, but yeah. Um, and the whole the whole thing is here that I know that a lot of people that come into our organization don't necessarily come in for the online training, don't necessarily come in for the coaching. They come in for the networking ability. Mm -hmm. So there's certain people where you're like, okay, cool, I get it. You're already successful. You're doing some massive things already, and you're you're here more to interact and network with the group rather than get coaching from me. That's cool. However, I'm still going to check in, in on you every so often. So that was something I had to um, – um, Learn to understand a bit, you know, and ba and basically kind of tailor it back a bit and not come out of the gate so hard. Um, because, you know, some people just say, hey, I want to drop 40, 50 grand, come work with you guys. But I'm not looking for, you know, the run of the mill package that you're offering everybody. And then there's certain clients who come in who are like, hey, every two weeks I want my call. No problem. I'm there for you, too. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems like you're maybe in an early adopter of this whole mentoring coaching thing like where when you're young and you're starting your businesses and you're working in them are you like man i i, th I think i know what i'm doing but uh i think i could be doing better Is everything it and it, it goes back earlier to my blue collar days and work with my hands gotcha i would go and i would read and i'd learn as much as i could myself i would then go and apply as much as i could myself and then i would say I've got myself to like the max capacity that I can bring myself to. Now, what else is out there that's going to help me go to that next level? So say you're a Finnish carpenter. Yep. You can learn on the job, but when you are sitting at the feet of and helping a master carpenter yep. is when you learn all this stuff you had no idea it was even possible, right? Exactly. So w real world example. Uh, I graduate high school at 17. I'm already a certified uh, mobile electronics installer. Nice. Okay. I got certified before I graduated high school, which is a pretty wild story. Yeah. Um, and then- uh, <laughs> Go I, get her? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I'll give you the quick story, quick version of it. Um, I was not a good student in high school. I love learning, but I only want to learn what I want to learn. Gotcha. And like testing in school, eh, it's not really me. Yeah. So- um, I have to take an elective in order to graduate. Mm. It's the last semester of school, and like, if I don't do this, I'm not getting in high school or with a diploma at least. So uh, I got this teacher, Mr. Gorjul. I'll never forget the guy. Um, and I was put in his class. It was a uh, technical drawing class, <laughs> bro. Me and a ruler and a pencil. I still can't draw the straight line. <laughs> so like, this, this is just not for me. I'm never going to use this. I know I'm not going to use what I'm learning here. And here I've got this big old book, this MECP study guide. And in the back of the book, it says you can uh, leverage or use a 
librarian to proctor a test and you can become certified. Hmm. Like, dude, this is before the internet. You know, this is yeah. a mail order book. There's no online testing or anything. So I didn't realize at the time, but I was actually selling my teacher on becoming my instructor for this and, and making this happen for me. So I sell this guy on this. He goes to the principal, gets the green light. He's like, cool. So he, he put together some curriculum and whatnot. And my final exam was the MECP, Mobile Electronic Certified Professional Test. Wow. And I passed as a basic installer. I think I got like a 77 on the was test. Was that the first deal you ever closed? I think it was. Closing the, the teacher on yeah. letting you. That's awesome. And it's, um, what, it's thinking outside the box, yeah. right? Which is maybe the coolest thing about running your own thing or starting your own business. Um, had a guy on here who uh, used to be in the oil and gas business, and now he's putting together a fund. They're going to build a bunch of automated uh, car washes all over Dallas. Sure. And um, he said, entrepreneurs are artists, right? You can make this thing whatever you want to make it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the cool thing about entrepreneurship and starting your own thing is that, hey, man, this can be – Whatever it can be, whatever you want it to be, and that's that's exciting. What do you think? Or what is it that holds a lot of business owners, like you know, may, maybe myself, back mm-hmm. from? Okay, I'm going to invest in myself here. Yeah. Is it the? It, I, I know we can talk about abundance mindset versus scarcity and those types of things, mm-hmm. but is it? I don't have time. We're not. We're not there yet. I don't deserve this yet. Mm-hmm. Are those all things that yeah, you see in ones. here? Time is probably the biggest one. Uh, and if anything's important to you, you're going to make the time. That's the bottom line. You know, kind of like me, you know, reading books at first. It, mm-hmm. it was important to me. So I figured out a way to get that knowledge, that information into my head. So if it's super important to you, you're not going to make some bullshit excuse. You're, you're going you're gonna to sacrifice some other area of your life and get it done. Yeah. The... Uh when you're the leader of an enterprise, the 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 time for excuses in in most cases has long since we've we've gotten over that. Yeah. And maybe it's just that hey, it's time to take that leap of faith, identify somebody that you resonate with, and mm-hmm. chase them down. What are some things that right out of the gate? you're commonly finding are blind spots that these entrepreneurs, small business owners didn't see. Are there certain like, is there like, are there topics or things or items that come up repeatedly and repeat themselves? What are some of those? Day one, nobody knows where their time is being spent. Ah, okay. So okay, you you come in, you coach with me. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to have a conversation and I'm going to set you up with a time study. Cool. And I'm going to put you through a two week long time study. You're going to hate me. (laughs) <laughs> sucks. You're going to document in 15-minute increments everything you do each and every day. So it's like counting weeks. calories, but we're counting time. Correct. Yeah, so cool. I'm not talking just business. I'm talking everything you do in your life, from sitting on the toilet to using the facilities and you know showering, You know how much time you spent with your wife. I don't need details, but yeah. you know, did you spend time with your wife? Did you spend time with your kids? How long? Mm-hmm. And document all that crap. So two things are happening here. Number one, I'm starting to teach you how to time block. Because most entrepreneurs kind of just sit down and say, hey, shit, whatever happens to me today, I'm yeah. going to just hold on for the ride. Yeah. Right? Reactionary I'm going to put out standpoint. fires. Yep. I'm going to be yeah. a, a professional firefighter yes. all day. So this starts to create the proactive mindset. You're block timing and you're setting time into those blocks for your calendar. Okay? So you're being proactive here. You're learning to become that way. And you're also going to notice probably within the first 48 to 36 hours – where you're spending your time and where it's going to waste. Mm. So, oh my God, I didn't realize I spent five hours on social media each day. So you're just bringing massive awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So step one, even prior to that, is figuring out what you're worth per hour. So how, you know, what, what are you making now? You know, do some simple uh, math calculations and figure out, okay, well, I'm making this much, you know, now per year. Okay, well, you know, 52 weeks, uh, average of 40, 40 hours per week. What are you, where are you at? You know, you at 95 bucks an hour, you at 120, or you at 1,000 or 2,500. It doesn't matter where you are, but we need to establish that baseline so we can say, okay, and as you know, as a business owner, what gets measured gets improved. Yeah. So if you're at $100 an hour now, okay, cool. What's it going to take to get you to two hundred dollars an hour? Yeah, and that's where the time study comes into play. So you set that base. Let's say you're at hundred bucks an hour. You set that base, and now you start doing the time study. And on the back end of my time study, I developed and it's in my book too. There's four buckets. You've got ten dollar, 
and $10,000 per hour tasks. You start taking those 15 minute increments and dropping them into the correct buckets. As a business owner, if you really want to get things moving and grooving, you should be in the thousand and ten thousand dollar an hour buckets only. All the other shit needs to get delegated off your plate. Yeah. Do you think delegating is probably one of the hardest things for? So it's not just me. Yep. Yep. It's, Dude, I struggle with it to this day. And is it just because when you're building something, especially before you have kids, it's kind of like it's your your child, oh, it's your, your baby, baby, and you. You're a perfectionist about Nobody that. Nobody can do it as good as me. Yeah. It'll take me more time to teach you than to just go do it ah, myself. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I've been those, down that road. Those, those thoughts <laughs> have crossed my mind. The other thing that annoys me about delegating is having to... F- so I used to make a list of things to do. And yeah. when I made that list, that list got accomplished and I moved on to a new list. And unfortunately, a lot of the things on that list were those low value buckets. Yep. Now I make a list of things I delegate. Mm-hmm. And I have to follow back up and make sure all those things get done. That there's a weird deal, even though stuff's getting done and more is getting done than when I was doing it my way. Yeah. I still have this weird feeling of I'm wasting time. There's redundancy there because I'm following up. Mm-hmm. I try to work with my people a lot on them being proactive. Hey, yeah. follow back up with me. I shouldn't have to chase you for mm-hmm. this. I give you something to do, do it, hit me back with a progress report just so yep. I know we're good. That doesn't always happen. Mm-hmm. And obviously everything's a, a growing process. Um, do you really wrestle with, with business owners on the delegating piece? Yep. Because in order to delegate properly, you've got to document. And I think that business owners overall just, they hear the word document and they say, oh, fuck. And they get scared. Paper shitless. the file. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't, listen, this is 2021. You do not have to document by writing or, or putting together a, a Google sure, Doc. Sure, sure. Shoot a fucking video, please. Ah, beautiful. There's a free software called Loom.com. Hmm. Okay, you can you can uh, basically record up to five minute long screen share videos. So cameras on you shows a little picture of your face, shows your screen. So if you're doing something in some kind of software, go in there, record that bad boy, and save the file and send it to somebody. Gotcha. So we started doing that. Um, uh, I started doing this at Top Class before I exited that company. But we did it over here at Break Free Academy. Was we actually had uh, some of our team members go in who were experts in a particular software. Hey, go in there. I need you to basically lay out everything that a new sales rep needs to know when they come in here. And we built an online training platform for our in-house sales team that they hmm. go through when they come in. That's and awesome. They're all Loom videos. Yeah. Wow, that's very handy. I never even heard of that. That's the, I guess that's the advantage, right? When you, um, when you're talking to somebody who's been there, you know, and you're not having to spend all this time to crack the code, the code's already been cracked. Yeah. Go to the source, figure it out, solve the problem. Your, uh, as, as you s- step from stone to stone, mm-hmm. have you stepped on a stone that took longer for you to weigh down because that person was so full of useful info? Yep. And those are the type of people you just stick with them longer because yeah. there's way more to absorb let's, here. Let's just be completely transparent and open because I've had this talk with them. That's how I feel about Ryan Stuman right now. I get to work with the guy every day, and I've, I've been stepping on his stone now going on almost four years. Yeah. You know, other people who I've worked with who have mentored me, I've only been on that stone a year or two years. And I was like, all right, well, <laughs> time, to, time to learn more. Sure. Uh, I don't feel that way working with him. And it's not just him, but it's also the clients that we bring in, the people that we attract, because they're all special in their own right. You know, that's the beautiful thing I think about coaching and also about podcasting too, you'll know. Yeah. Because right now I'm giving you some information. I'm 100%. sure I've got some value from you from this as well. Yeah. Same thing happens with coaching calls. I might get on a phone call with, with a client and he starts explaining or she starts explaining a situation to me like, hey, this is what's going on and this is what I'm about to do. What do you think? And I'm over there like, Fuck, I didn't even know you could do that. So I get awesome. to learn just as much as they do from me. So it's, it's a two-way street, and I think that's that's something that's really special. That's very cool. Um, is this a, a myth that needs to be dispelled that if you're not in the same space or vertical as me, I can't learn as much from you? 100%. Because you, if you were coaching me, mm-hmm. would do the time study – I don't know what else you'd do. Maybe uh, come to the off- office, whatever, shadow me or send somebody to shadow me. or have, And by doing that, you're going to dissect and you're going to start finding all kinds of blind spots that I don't even know are there. Yep. And that it doesn't matter if I am a mechanic, doesn't make a, difference. a roofer, mm-hmm. an attorney, an accountant. Yep. Business is business. It is. 
and in, and you don't level up till you can scale. Mm-hmm. And there's barriers to scaling, as we all know, because we all have tried it. Yeah, we all re- we've all read 10x, sure. right? We all know that's what is supposed to happen if mm-hmm. you want to own your own jet, right? But it's easier said than done. Hundred percent. Um, so I come in uh, as a coach to Break Free Academy, and good old Stuman says, "All right, you got your first client." <laughs> all right, cool. I'm all excited. He hands me this this woman named Jessica Stroud. She's an insurance agent. The fuck do I know about insurance? Sure. So I'm like, oh man, like I can't tell this guy, like, you know, eh, this one's not not the one for me. You know, like I don't really have a choice and I don't want to say, hey, the first one you're sending me is is really not what I specialize in. Here I am. I'm I'm thinking I'm a service-based business expert, and that's it. And it's like, all right, well, let me at least get in a phone call with this person and and see what's what. So I get on a call with Jessica, we click immediately, and I work with her for almost two years. Wow. So, so much so, and she's she's done so much, and she's evolved so much as a person in her company, that she's now one of our coaches at Break Free Academy. So it's really cool really? to see it go full circle. That's awesome. I think that's a testament to, your, to, to the program, right? It, that you were a client, and now you are helping run the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, same story with her. That means the thing works. If it didn't work, you wouldn't be, yeah. you wouldn't have moved to Dallas. I mean, welcome to Texas. Yeah. But hey, listen, man. Um, I didn't come here for Break Free Academy. A lot of people think I did just because the timing was that way. Um, you heard of Seventy Five Hard? Yeah. Okay. So I go through Seventy Five Hard in May of this year, twenty twenty. Cool. I was kind of tired of sitting on the couch drinking beer and eating <laughs> Oreos all night to three in the morning. <laughs> right. With, especially with quarantine in New York. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I realized that I was being average, living as, as an average person. And one of my personal core values is I refuse to be average. It's like, oh, fuck. Badass. <laughs> so I realized this. I'm, I'm being average. It's like, okay, I've known about this 75 hard program for quite some time. Now's the time to do it. So I do it. I go through it. Three days into it, I get a, like a lightning bolt hits me again. And it's like, oh, okay, not only being average over here, but this is average, this is average, uh, this is average. I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> so, Fucking Andy for Yeah, Sella. thanks, Andy. God damn thanks, it. Andy. <laughs> so the cool thing here is it literally changed my life. And I, I'm grateful That's for awesome. that. I really am. And uh, I'm like, all right, I'm living in this average-ass house in New York. I've got this average-ass business that is okay. It, I mean, I don't worry about money at all. Like, I got mailbox money coming in every week. But I know there's just so much more and it can be so much better than what I currently have. And uh, I had conversations with my wife prior. We had already been down here to Dallas looking. Really? Because, uh, listen, I, I was coming down here once a month for the past three years yeah, at this point. Yeah, true. So she would make trips with me every so often. We'd rent a car and drive around and see all different places. Nice. So I got to explore this area more as a local than as as a visitor. So um, – I said, listen, you know, we kind of put this whole moving thing on the back burner a while while back. The, the housing market in New York is going through the roof right now. Everyone's trying to move out of the city and into Long Island and the surrounding suburban areas. And I, I lived in Long, Long Island at the time. And uh, she's like, yeah, let's go. It didn't take much convincing. That's she, awesome. She, dude, she's been my rock since day one. She's been like right next to me. Badass. Anything that I'm willing to do, she's like, all right, let's roll. Nice. And, and that's like, that's probably one of my hidden tools and secrets that I have in my life yeah. is just having that support from the strong woman. That's awesome. So uh, we put the house in the market, and 48 hours later, it sells to a cash buyer for $35,000 over asking oh, price. Oh, shit. It's like, oh, shit. That's awesome. It's like, all right, well, the house sold fast. We're I guess go this find is a house happening. Texas, yeah. yeah, fuck. <laughs> uh, then we had to have the conversation with the families and basically tell them we were all leaving, and that caused a whole shit storm. Yeah. Um, but we, we kind of pushed through it and came down here, started looking for houses, Put four or five different offers in. They were kicked back. Didn't go through. Timing wasn't right. Finally, we find one. Everything's accepted. And we, we wind up making the transition down here. I think it was September 23rd or 25th of 2020 is when we nice. moved down. So I, I didn't come down here for Break Free Academy. So it just kind of lined up. It lined huh? up. So That's I, crazy. Right as I'm, I'm selling the house, I also realized that the business, I've lost my passion for it, and I no longer mm. want to be a part of it. Really? I, I've grown apart from my partner as well. Like burned out kind of thing? Yeah, I just don't have a passion for the industry. Burned out. I don't want to use my hands like that anymore. Gotcha. I don't want to deal with... Like the clients in that industry, they don't want to deal with us. Hmm. They have to deal with us. Gotcha. So you get on the phone with somebody and it's just like, 
hey, yeah, cool, great. Just come do your thing. So super transactional. Very transactional. Yeah. There's no real relationships gotcha. being built. Um, so I decide to get out of there. I start that whole process, start getting the business valuated, start getting you know legal contracts in place and, and negotiating with my partner to, to an agreement that worked for both of us. Uh, and when I got down here, hit up my attorney and said, fire up the new LLC and we got that one here, Step yeah, Up Academy, uh, which then became the new podcast name, rebranded the podcast there, and uh, was literally building my own version of Break Free Academy. Hmm. That's what Step It Up Academy was for. Gotcha. And I'm sitting in my home office, cranking away in October on a random Wednesday afternoon. My phone rings, and anybody who knows me knows I don't answer my phone. Yeah. Like, unless you're on my calendar, <laughs> I don't answer my phone. Good. 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 There's, there's there's always that fucking guy who follows you everywhere who's yes. trying to sell you the oh, warranty okay. for the Jeep you owned five years ago. Yes. <laughs> I don't have 30 minutes to tell you I'm not interested. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a phone call and it it's um uh, it's one of the team members over at Break Free Academy, Christine, who's our CFO, and she's like, "Hey, uh, any interest in coming over here working with us?" Wow. I'm like, "What?" It, it just came out of left field. I wasn't huh. expecting it. So I was like, "All right, listen, I'm not saying no, but let's." Let's all have a, a, a meeting, conversation here. Long story short, a couple of weeks go by. Uh, we have some conversations. We come to an agreement. And I basically committed to Ryan. I said, hey, man, I'm going to come in here. This, I'm going to start November 1st. You have me the month of November, the month of December. So we're going to date before we get married. Because, listen, I pull in over six figures a year coaching your clients here. We've got a good thing going there. Yeah. Okay. I can always fall back. I know I can handle myself in my own business. But I don't want to ruin our relationship and then have all of this crumble and have nothing sure. left. Sure. So he's like, all right, that works. Start small. Yeah. yeah. So we date before we get married. It's the analogy I like to use hmm. there. And uh, come January 1st, things are fucking kicking ass and moving and grooving. We pulled a couple million dollars more into the company. Wow. Just by coming in and systematizing, you know, grabbing that, that, that uh, low-hanging fruit and saying, hmm. oh, again, similar to you. The business owners, a lot of times, and people in the business, you get there and you're so close to it because you're doing the work. Yeah. But it takes someone from that with that outside perspective to come in and say, and this is why coaching works. The outside eyeballs look at your business and say, oh, there, 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 and there. That's what we need to do now. So I went in there and basically helped them just organize a bit more. And that's you going into an organization that's built around helping other businesses. Mm -hmm. Right, so lots of advice going out. Hey, do this. This will help. Yeah. Put the, put it put this system or this process in place. But you going in and helping tighten up systems and processes to make them more to make BFA and that whole enterprise more efficient, profitable, organized. All mm -hmm. of that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's almost like any business anywhere always has room for growth and improvement. Maybe it's just a matter of the people at the top mm -hmm. putting that ego aside enough to, yeah. to say, hey, we want to win and we don't care who's right or wrong, yep. right? Do you want to be right or do you want to be rich, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's very cool. I mean, that's, uh, well, that's a testament to your skill though, right? And to your perspective and to your uh, talents for finding things because- I mean, they, they're, they're giving advice all day, every day to entrepreneurs yeah. and business owners. In your experience running businesses, um, so, you know, every business, whether you're selling a good or a service, is, is going out of business without sales. Yep. Is talent more important than culture or is culture more important than talent? So you get a talented kid comes in, this guy can sell everything, but he's got a bad attitude. He's me first. No, he doesn't buy into the Goodbye. ethos. Boom. Yeah. Don't even, no. we don't even, because maybe the rotten apple doesn't spoil the bunch, but Always. we're not even going to risk it. Always. Yeah. Yeah. In my experience, I've never, I've hired so many times for skill. Yeah. And that person comes in, they're a badass at what they do. They're not coachable. You can't tell them, hey, this is how we do things here, and this is why. They don't give a shit. This is how I've always done it. This is how I'm going to continue to do it. These are the results I get. And that just doesn't work if you're trying to build a business that's based around culture. So, you know, we're, we're very picky on who we allow into the organization. That goes for clients. That goes for employees. That goes for subcontractors. 
And, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I did right off the bat was I came into Break Free Academy and built a hiring process. There mm. was no formal hiring process. Gotcha. Yes, Ryan had put together core values. He had put together a mission statement, which was great. Okay, but who here knows him? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, get the graphic designer who's on payroll to design all this shit, right? And guess what? Now we got new artwork in, in, the, in the office. Awesome. So you walk in there and there's no mistaking what we're about. Gotcha. Do you guys walk around with a mission statement card in your wallet no. too? I know some guys who do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just let's get this thing woven into the fabric, yep. right? This is what we're all about. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about it a lot and we're gonna live by it. Yep. How many it. times do you think you made that mistake of hiring for talent? Because I know when you're a young entrepreneur yeah. and you're, especially if you're a hustler, which you and I both are, you're like, man, I, I can change this person, yeah. right? Let's get them in. I need, yeah. I need a good sales guy. We need that. We need these sales and I can turn them into a team player. Yep. Because I've made this mistake many times. I struggle with it more uh, in previous businesses especially in uh, the service-based businesses or something that required a skilled trade. Cause you know, it's like, shit, I don't have time to hire, you know, uh, a green back here to come in and then it's going to take me six or 12 months to get this guy up to speed. Yeah. You know? And, and every time I did that though, those were the baddest guys on the back end. Yeah. If you put the time into them. Oh yeah. But a lot of times like, Oh shit, you know, we just landed a $400,000 project and we got to get 10 techs on site by Tuesday. Hmm. What do you do? Yeah. So Beggars you got to go out there and choose. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you, hey, I'm not letting this opportunity go. So you fill those seats as best as possible. So, you know, a lot of times what we would do is we just go in and hire subs. The problem with that is you're spending more money going out. Those guys cost more money than if you were to hire an employee. Really? Especially, you know, coming from the GPS tracking industry. Yeah. You know, you're hiring a guy who's literally your competition. does the same thing you do. And you say, hey, man, I, I need you to come in and give me help with this. All right, cool. I want a day rate of this. Sure. You know, so this guy's going to want seven fifty, eight hundred bucks a day. Meanwhile, uh, uh, an employee is going to cost you two fifty, three hundred. Right. Yeah, that's um, that's in that's very interesting. I know, you know, you read about the the best, the most cutting edge, uh, innovating companies, and they always talk about culture. Yeah. Um, and obviously. Like you were, were saying about reading, if, if it's a priority to you, you make it a priority. Um, when when you're going out to hire people, are you in your old businesses before, uh, even, even when you were coaching, were you doing more attracting or were you doing more recruiting, trying to get clients or even people to work for you what's the because there's a difference. there's there's a difference and is it is one bad and one good or not or maybe there's a balance between the two yeah i think um this is where we use and leverage social media heavily you know you constantly got to go out there and tell people what you do and you don't always have to tell them everything how you know we use a um we use the 80 20 rule posting on social media so 80 percent of the content is to educate um, or entertain the person, and then the other 20% is for you to pitch your shit. Yeah. Hey, this is what I do. And it doesn't always have to be so direct. It can be, hey, while at Break Free Academy the, today, we had so-and-so came in the office. Cool. And you just kind of mention those hints. But you start doing that enough, and you start staying consistent with it. It's a power move, okay? Some power moves take a long time to play out, Yeah. all right, versus a force move. A force move, we can move this table, and I can push it against the wall right now. Right, but that's we're working for a power move, and they take a much longer time to see an ROI. But what happens is you start attracting the right people by putting out that consistent message over and over and over again. So, and this this applies to sales because to me, hiring is the same thing as selling. Yeah, marketing and hiring are identical. So you put out the right message long enough, you're going to push away the wrong people. You're going to attract the right people. And we, we take hiring and basically make a funnel out of it. Sure. So you come in the top of the funnel, just like you would if, if we were selling you an online course or a coaching mm -hmm. program. Right. And then we start filtering you through. We, we start asking you to do very specific things. If you don't do those very specific things, you've already self-eliminated yourself. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you can't do a couple of these real simple deals, then, mm -hmm. then you're out on it. Uh, is it Zig Ziglar who came up with the, maybe the axiom or the quote, uh, as soon as you start helping other people achieve their dreams, you will achieve yours? Do you? And that seems that seems like maybe a 
part of your core values. Yeah. You really want to help people. You get burned out on the other business. You're doing the coaching thing that really does help people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel more fulfilled doing totally. it? I mean, do you feel, is this, yeah. are you, are you doing, you wake up every day stoked about what you're doing with your life? Yeah. I wake up every day and immediately pop out of bed. It isn't like I'm laying in bed for an extra 15 minutes or hitting that snooze. And part of that is my trainer. He'd come by and just grab me by the throat and drag <laughs> me out of bed. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, it's definitely more fulfilling for me. I love what I do. Uh, and, and even if it wasn't attached to Break Free Academy, I like the fact that I'm able to wake up each and every day. Even this right here, I come in and we have we have a, a meaningful conversation. Yeah. Like this this podcast we're recording here is going to go out on many different mediums and it's going to impact and help other people succeed in business. Yeah. That's my purpose. That's why I'm here. That's awesome. So that's why when you reach out to me and say, hey, come on the podcast, yes, it wasn't even- a, No, man. That, you responded so yeah, fast. Boom, I was like, fuck. All right. Thank yeah. you. That's awesome. Um, no, I, and I do appreciate it because I reach out to a lot of people and, you know, sometimes they'll message back. Sometimes I won't. I follow up a lot though. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a follow upper. That's um, a sales game right there. Yeah, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you have some, uh, as you've developed and as you've worked on yourself, you've mentioned mm -hmm. that a couple of times. Do you have some atomic habits? Have you read atomic habits no, by James Clear? It's great. Um, do you have some list. habits that you've put into place that mm -hmm. you can tell that now that, a hundred percent of my time is not just grinding, yeah. but I split it up and I've got free time and I sleep better and I train. Can you talk about some of those that yep. have uh, changed your life? You talked about 75 hard and that's kind of mm -hmm. what that whole program is about. Yeah. A lot of it is. Uh, but 75 hard gives you the freedom to kind of get that done whenever the hell you want. As yeah. long as you get it done within the time period you're awake. Um, I started getting structured with my calendar. That's about four years ago, five years ago. Uh, hired a trainer in New York, right? And and, and basically f said, hey, I want the earliest appointment that you can give me because I'm a night owl by by nature. It's kind of how my DNA rolls. Uh, and I know that this, I'm living an upside down life. Uh, but if I come in and I'm your first appointment, if I'm late or if I don't show up, I'm going to fuck you and every other client behind you. And morally, I can't do that. Yeah. So I went in there, started working the first appointment, and it, dude, it sucked. Getting like, what time early. were we talking? So about? I was I was in the gym with her at six a.m. Yeah. So now here we are, fast forward three, four years, whatever it is, and that's my normal routine. I'm up at, and I'm a big fan of morning routines. All right, like the, my morning routine is structured, and if I'm not in that routine, I feel off. Hmm. So five a.m. is wake up. Okay, I leave. So five a.m. to five thirty, I'm kind of waking up, let the dog out, take a pee. Uh, go start my cup of coffee. I always hop in the shower first thing in the morning, hmm. right? And this seems kind of weird because I go to the gym right after. I actually shower before I go to the gym. Yeah. And it's more to loosen my body up and kind of just sure. get a little flex going on. You know, gotcha. so just start to move a bit. Yeah. Um, 5.30, I'm out the door. I'm at the gym by 6. Yes, I do have a 30-minute drive to the gym. It's Ugh, ridiculous. Bummer. But I love the guy, so it's the only yeah. reason I do it. So 30-minute drive. I go there. He kicks my ass for an hour. Are you looking at your phone at all during that session? First, so here's the deal. I'll backtrack here a second. That's a great question. And I was going to say, do you look at your phone when you wake up? Yeah, or first do thing you I wait? Do. Okay. So here's what I do. Because a lot of people say, don't look at the phone first yeah. thing. I look at the phone first thing for one reason and one reason only. I write down five things I'm grateful for. Gotcha. Okay. After that, the phone is away until I'm in the car. And when I'm in the car, the phone goes on a magnetic holder. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's plugged in. Got my my CarPlay going, and I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to an audiobook. Gotcha. So that's the the uh, so the 30 minute drive to the gym. I'm now working on my mindset, working on my brain. Go to the gym. I spend an hour there, work on my body physically. 30 minute drive back home, back to the mindset, working on me. I'm not listening to music. It's a podcast or an audiobook. That's it. Okay. So now, come in. And this is now, I get back from the gym, it's 7.30. From 7.30 to about 9 o'clock is my time with the family. Okay. I'll go sit in the couch, I'll have a protein shake, drink my, take my vitamins, uh, hang out, see nice. the kids. So I'm in the office by about 10 o'clock every day. So I leave the house by 9.30. In between there's obviously in the shower, clean up, mm -hmm. get out the door. But even if I get sidetracked and I'm and and I have to get into that reactionary state and I'm putting out fires all day at work, or a client's coming in, I got to take that client out to dinner. I've already put the time into the family. Gotcha. I don't have to worry about oh shit, you know, I'm leaving the kids hanging tonight. Sure. Yeah, you got it. You don't want to say got it out of the way, 
But you prioritized it. Yeah, it's prioritized. one of the most important thing parts of your day, and you got that. You knocked that out mm-hmm. right at the beginning. Yeah. What about and you're looking at the phone to write down the things you're grateful for because being grateful is part of the path to joy and happiness. Yep. I mean, I think most successful people would say that. Um, are you answering it? I mean, like if you see no. So you're not ant doing any work nope. until family time's done. Yeah. And while you're working out, you're working out. We're yeah, not the, looking the at the phone your... is not even anywhere near me when, while I'm working out. Do you while you're working out, do you ever come up with like a real innovative idea? Nope, never. Really? No. It happens for me in the shower or while driving. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because if you ask a it. bunch of people that, they'll mm-hmm. all tell you something different. Yep. I get crazy. I go on walks and I get come up with crazy shit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I'm f- a fucking genius. Yep. Uh, um, Jim Quick talks about it a lot. And he talks about something when you go into the shower and the steam and the hot water and the water flowing on you, it puts your brain into a theta state hmm. where it kind of like unlocks and allows all of this this shit to just come into your head. And that's where it works for me. And it happens different places, different so times. So you don't, like, you're not listening to something while you're in the shower then? Nope. Shower's silent. Just shower. Interesting. Just, yep. I listen to stuff while I'm, sh- I'll have to try the... I have to try to get into the theta state. Mm-hmm. That sounds very interesting. Does faith play a role in your life? Uh, I think it does a little bit. I'm not a religious person. I uh, grew up Roman Catholic. Um, got through the whole thing, you know, communion, confirmation, got married in a church, uh, but wasn't really ever, I would say, so religious. Um, but I, I do believe in faith. You know, I do believe that there's, uh, in spirituality, I, I do believe that there's something greater here than what we as humans can, can comprehend currently. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to put it any other way, but there's those times in life where you sit back and whether you're a believer or not, you're going to pray to somebody. Yeah. Maybe this last year for a lot of people. Yeah, man, for real. Absolutely. Um, when you're, uh, coaching, uh, small business owners or sales guys, mm-hmm. cause you, you found Ryan through sales talk with sales pro. So yep. tons of sales pros in there, lots of funny memes and stuff. <laughs> um, what what are some of the things that you come right out of the gate talking to a young salesperson about? Is it, hey, we need to work on your ability to connect with the client. We need to, if, if I took a transcript of your phone call with that client, you should be doing 10% of the talking and yeah. 90%. What are some of those real world, like practical tips and hacks you're giving to young sales? Stop people? trying to sell people and start serving them. Okay. Simple as that. Start stop with the with you know trying to hardcore close the people. Even though Ryan's nickname's a hardcore closer, but if you ever speak to him and, and interact with him, he's not that way. No, it's a nickname he's got. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in this, and this is something that Grant Cardone says too a lot. Is you know you've got to go and you have to believe in what it is you're selling. Sure. If you're not a believer, then why are you selling it? Yeah. You know, if you're selling a, a BMW. Go ahead and buy one. Own that sucker so you know all about it. Nice. Okay, and then, hey, this is why. That's one of the reasons I've been so effective at Break Free Academy. Yeah. I'm a believer, <laughs> and I've been through the process as a consumer first. Yeah, from stem to stern. Correct. So yeah. people come in and say, hey, what's your opinion on this? Well, I'll give you my honest opinion. Dude, I'm just, I told you when we first started this, I'm open, honest, and transparent with everything. Yeah. So someone comes in and they ask me, hey, is this the best program for me? Well, let's have a conversation first. And when we're done with this conversation, I'm going to point you in the correct direction. And that all stems back to my car audio days. Because someone would come in with, with a car and say, hey, I want this gear because my buddy just got this in his F-150. That's great, but you've got a Hyundai Sonata and none of that shit's going to fit. Yeah. So this is what I recommend. Gotcha. Yeah. So customizing the approach. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to educating the client, right? A lot of it's educating. So when you go, we always tell all, all our people, um, none of them are sales guys. We don't have sales meetings. Mm-hmm. We're, we go into and we try to help the client understand the entire process. And we tell them all where all the pitfalls are. Yeah. Like this is bad's going to happen here. Something bad's going to happen here. Some, we know because we do it a thousand times mm-hmm. a year. And what we're going to do is help bridge over those bad parts. And yep. at the end, there's no close. Mm-hmm. It's just hey, we hope we've presented you with the facts and the info that helps you make the mm-hmm. best decision for you. If that best decision is us, we'd love to, we'd love to help you out. Mm-hmm. 
you hear tons of gurus talk about, you know, the key to building an audience is bringing value and things like that. And those are those are pretty words and yeah. stuff like that. But what are some practical ways to bring value? Um, let's say just to some of the young guys who watch this and reach out to me on their social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's more than just quote cards, mm -hmm. right? And it's more than. Uh, I don't know, shirtless gym selfies. What are some, some practical ways to bring your audience value? Tell stories. Ah, Tell stories about what you're experiencing right now. Hmm. You know, talk, hey, this is the experience I just had, and this is the lesson I learned from it. And turn that into a long format style post. Gotcha. So, again, you're educating your audience. And speak to them as if it's you, let's say, a month ago, three months ago. Or, hey, you know, the, the consumer or the client is in this situation. Speak to them as if they're in that situation right now and try to help them out. That's what someone's going to connect with. Mm -hmm. That's going to attract people into your organization, too, if you're trying to attract talent yeah. into the organization. What's something that you, at, at your ripe old age of whatever <laughs> it is now, would tell yourself at 17 when you graduated and closed that? teacher on yep. that uh, elective what's something you'd tell yourself don't stop reading ever really yeah the reading thing's a big piece to you yeah i think i'd be light years ahead if i had continued reading from uh, high school to now is that so, a regret um no i'm not really one with regrets everything kind of happens for a reason and yeah. i am where i am today because of what has happened i shouldn't say happened to me because everything happens for you not to you there you go that too yeah um but yeah <sighs> I wish I had done things a little different, but I wouldn't say it's a regret. You know, I learned a lot of valuable lessons very quickly when I started my first business. You know, kind of just threw, my, threw myself in the fire. Yeah. I was like, hey, let's figure it out or Hey, die. that's the best way to learn, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shoot. Um, yeah, man. When you when you start something and, and you're grasping, maybe uh, – Maybe maybe throwing up one of those Hail Mary prayers because you mm -hmm. got to make payroll or something like that. You learn pretty fast that shit gets real in the business world and it gets real oh, yeah. fast because numbers don't lie. No, they don't. Listen, man, more than <laughs> one occasion I've had to go to my personal savings account and withdraw money to cover you payroll. You bet. You I'm bet. I'm sure you have too. Absolutely. And anybody who says they haven't is full of shit. <laughs> For real, in my yep. opinion. Yep. I mean, I agree. The, uh, the mindset thing, though, happens – for you, not to you. All of those things. I mm -hmm. find that mindset's not something that most people are just born with. It's something that they forge, right? When you yep. forge something, you get it really hot, you hammer it, you put it in water, you do it again. Mm -hmm. They curate, right? Curating. A curator at a museum takes care of all of the exhibits, makes sure they're all clean. You, you protect that. You grow it. The mindset piece to you is obviously, you know, what's brought you to where you are now. Yeah. Where where did that all start changing? When that first lightning bolt that you explained it earlier mm -hmm. hit, was that kind of yeah, where? Yeah, I you, think a lot of it happened, you know, from my upbringing as a kid, and just, um, you know, I'm, I'm half Puerto Rican, half Irish. Okay. And my Puerto Rican side of the family is the real hard workers, right? And I had these two uncles who were just hard asses. <laughs> they loved me to death. And they would do anything for me. But when it came time to work, there wasn't playing around. No, no, we're here to work. Gotcha. And those dudes, like, literally worked my fingers to the bone as a kid. And that, that started Just manual doing labor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was all automotive-related stuff. Gotcha. Or, you know, doing some some uh, home projects construction-wise. Uh, and, you know, I learned or, and was had that, that hardcore workout that just instilled in me at a young age from yeah. now. And that, that carried me through to a certain point. The lightning bolt hits me. My first daughter comes into the into the world. And it's like, all right, well... Now it's time to start sharpening things. And through the reading is where I start forging that mindset. And, you know, if you read enough and all these damn books that all, if you look at, look at them deeply, they all say the same damn thing. They do. Okay. Just in a different format. Yeah. And some people jive with the, one versus the other. Sure. They all say to get around a good solid group of people. You know, the five people who you surround yourself with influence you the most. It's no bullshit. Yeah. And when I started intentionally, okay, okay, there goes that intentionality again. When I started intentionally getting around the right people and putting myself into the room where I wasn't the smartest individual, that's when things got good. Yeah. The, uh, the intentionality around tracking down a mentor or tracking down a business coach, um, you know, when you, when you bet on yourself, 
and you make that decision in your life, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I am my best investment. Yep. You know, no, no, no ego behind that, but just no one's going to do this shit for me, man. No mm-hmm. one's going to put the work in for me, do the reps for me. Ask Steve Kuklo. Yep. Does, does someone go lift those weights for him? Then he plugs a USB in. Doesn't work that way. No, man. He goes and grinds it the fuck out. Yep. Um, the, the, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it's just a fact that when you bet on yourself, your life changes. Mm-hmm. There's got, there have to be times in your business career where you were like, you know what, man, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can keep going where you just had to double down mm-hmm. because adver- the adversity, the rock was rolling down the hill at you. And, and when in your life did you start seeing adversity as an opportunity? Um, probably right around the same time when my daughter came in. Yeah, was yeah, big, that's when I when I started th- seeing things in a different. That was light. a big lightning bolt. Yeah, it really bro. was, dude. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like oh, you know, oh shit, we got a problem now. I was like, okay, cool. What's the problem? How can we go and fix it? Sure. You know, a lot of reading unlocked that too. You know, uh, Grant Cardone talks about it heavily in ten X. You know, it doesn't happen. Nothing happens to you. It happens for you. So you know, hey, if I was driving over here today and I got rear-ended, it's nobody else's fault but mine. Not not even the guy who rear-ended me. I could have left the office 30 seconds later mm. or 30 seconds earlier and avoided that accident. And that's uh that that's all about ownership, right? Yep. I'm going to own my piece. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to blame anything on other people. Yeah. Uh, have you read Extreme Ownership by Jocko? Yes, yeah. Sir. I mean, there's there's a <laughs> there's a hell of a lot to be said about how our society and culture might change if people started to actually take extreme ownership. Yeah. Could you imagine what this country would be like? No. I, I almost can't. No, I feel like I cannot. Yeah. I'm 42. How old are you? 41. I mean, no, I don't think I can I don't think I could wrap my head around that if that was to come to pass. Yeah. Because there's so much it's not my fault, it's your fault. It's, Pass the buck. And it seems like a lot of us who are entrepreneurs immediately gravitate toward each other because we're in an ultimate accountability environment Mm -hmm. where the buck cannot be passed if the buck gets passed we go out of business that like-minded piece and getting around people that you're like-minded to were there times early in your entrepreneurial career where you felt like lonely like i'm on an island i got no still yeah (laughs) interesting (laughs) i think it happens you know there's there's certain periods and times in in one's career where you're like fuck i got this crazy idea and no one believes in me and uh yeah you feel lonely you know it's like Entrepreneurship is like the biggest roller coaster in the world. Because one day you're at the top and you're high as a kite. You're yeah. like, oh my God, this is amazing. Things are going great. And literally three seconds later, yeah. you could be at the bottom because someone called you and said, hey, I hate to break it to you, but something got fucked up. Right. And you feel like the loneliest piece of shit in the world. Yeah. I mean, it is the role, it is a massive roller coaster. Mm-hmm. It's hourly, if not, like you said, <laughs> secondly, yeah. right? That it's going great. We just made this sale, or we just brought this b- b- promising mm-hmm. talent on, and then over here, this person's leaving. Or oh, yeah, it's 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 a tough deal. Back to the culture thing. How do you instill that major team ethos into a team that's already built yep. or an organization that's already built? Is that tough? Is that something that you tell some of your people you coach? Hey. Some of these people who you started this thing with, yeah. they're not going to be with you because you're going to have to draw a line in the sand and mm-hmm. go, to grow, we have to do this. Yep. If you're not going to do this, we're going to move on without you. Sure. Yeah, totally. You know, basically, uh, whether you have a culture, and I say culture, let's, let's just call it core values. Whether you have your core values documented and written and, and, and everyone on the team knows about them or not, they're there. It's, it's up for me, and part of what I do with my coaching is help you discover and figure out what those values are. You know, what, what, are, what are the values that you're unwilling to waver from? Mm. They're non-negotiables. And we need to help you extract those out of your head. We'll put them on paper. Okay, you want to get a little fancy, we can put them on the wall. <laughs> but that's where a lot of people stop. That's where I see a lot of big corporate companies. Oh, we got core values on the wall. Guru, fantastic. Like, does your team know what they are? Are you coaching your team members on, hey, this is a positive reason? Um, you 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 live this value by sh- doing X? Or, hey, you fucked this up because you didn't live up to the value of this? You have to use every moment. You have to turn it into a coachable moment for your team. And it's that constant. And it's almost like beating a dead horse. You know, that's yeah. what it seems like after a while. But you have to You're constantly just banging the it. drum. 
incessantly, yeah. hoping that it's going to be absorbed yeah. sometimes. Yep. And even team meetings. Yeah. You, know, you, you, we, we fire up every team meeting. We read the core values. So really? This, this is what it is. That's cool. Yeah. So we have our quarterly meetings. We get together, and the first thing is we stand up and say, these are the values. By the way, just a reminder, even though they're in a wall and you guys get to see them every day when you come in the office, I just want to remind you why these are the values and how we live them out. Sure. What are some of the um, common traits that the best of the best that you've coached or mm-hmm. you've come in contact with as you've been rubbing shoulders with all these entrepreneurs? What are some of the common traits of those mm-hmm. really high level? I just met with one before I came and uh, came here and met with you. Yep. Were these really high level guys? What are some of those common traits? Those Effective those guys in communication. Gals? Okay. I say it's probably the top one. They're just really they good at communicating. communicate like a motherfucker. You know, and some of them are short, brutal, blunt, but they tell you exactly what it is. They don't have time to waste. Sure. And I like that personally myself. It's kind of how I roll. Yeah. Let's um let's get right down to business here mm-hmm. because if we're not here to all, to win, then let's just pack it in and go fishing. Yeah, pretty right? much. I mean, like, what are we doing here? What's the point of all this sh- of this shit if we're not all going to take it seriously? Yep. The uh, the toughest fire that you ever had. Do you ever have to f- fire somebody? Yeah. Uh, every one of them. Yeah. There, I wouldn't say that one has really stuck out from the rest. Um, I had to I had to do one recently, and uh, fired this woman on a Monday, right after the holidays. Mm. And fantastic person, didn't fit the values of the company. Sure. Okay, I have nothing personally against her whatsoever. Made the fire. The, that's on Monday, Friday evening. Uh, we or Friday during the day we have our Fly and Friday event for our Apex executives, yeah. our top clients. They all come in from around the country, and afterwards we go out and have a couple of drinks at a local establishment. And guess who's standing next to the bar? Uh, Man, like, oh, damn. Oh, that's a weird situation. I bet. So went over and had a conversation. Like what? What else do you do? I, I'm. I don't want to be a dick, you know. But uh, that was probably the strangest one recently. Uh, but man, firing is probably the worst thing I, I, of being a leader, of being a business owner, or somebody in any leadership position. It's it, never fun. It's no fun. Did you have to acclimate yourself to? Hey, this business. Not everybody's gonna like me. I just got to do what I got to do. Or has that been a growing process? <laughs> I think I've just been. Uh, a little bit of an asshole my whole life. Yeah. And it's kind of come naturally. It's that Irish, Puerto Rican. <laughs> we're we're yeah. drinking tequila and whiskey over here. Yeah. A little that, bit. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you play sports in high yeah, school? Football. Football, yeah. baseball. And those, I'm sure, impacted your perspective on how to build a business that really pull all pulls in the same direction. Yeah, I didn't realize it at the time. Right. But, you know, looking back at it now, sure, with team sports, especially football, you know, because you get together. I was a lineman, you know, and, and everything had to be in its exact place at the exact time for the play to go off and work. Sure. Got a hitch. Yeah. And uh, I definitely learned to pull some lessons from there. You want to come out and uh, run around with us when we play little old boys rugby? Absolutely not. Come on, brother. Let's do it. <laughs> my my playing days are over as well. My uh, faithful crew can attest. I always talk about all my shoulder reconstruction. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the team thing is um, – Important. Uh, it's a it's a beat beaten dead horse now. Trust the process. Yeah. But when you're coaching a guy or a gal and they first get started, you talked about power moves yeah. about 20 minutes ago. It's gonna take a while to turn this battleship. Is there? Are you talking to them about? Hey, you got to be patient. Yeah. Right. But let's also have a sense of urgency. Sure. So. We know it's going to take a while, but let's, like Elon Musk says, let's turn that 10-year goal into a six-month goal, and you're going to accomplish way more that way. Mm-hmm. What, what? How are you helping coach? Business people want results right now. Yep. Hey, I dropped, I gave you 30K. I want to see a result now. What, mm-hmm. what are you doing there to kind of guide them and say, That's hey, funny, this is going to take a minute? Um, a lot of people come in, and, and they, they start seeing results pretty quickly if they do the work. Uh, which is pretty cool. So the process that we have in place does work. 12-month-long commitment. The the online coaching portion of it, so the online course, is a 26-week course. So the intention is you come in, you watch one video per week, you do the homework, and they compound on each other. So week one, you come in, you watch the video, do the homework. 
Week two, you do the homework from week one again, and you watch the video and do homework from week two. And this is a compounding effect. So you're actually starting to build this. We call it building your machine. It's the name of the course. Okay. You're building this machine. And this machine basically becomes this online marketing source for you. That's it's it's showing you off as the attractive character. It's showing you off as the expert in whatever it is you are doing. Yeah. Whether it's you know the authority. You're in your the field. authority. Yeah. yeah. Whether you're a coach, whether you're a, a contractor, whether you're an insurance agent, it doesn't make a difference. We're going to build you into that attractive character. So, like again, we were talking. You don't have to go out there and say, "Hey, come buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit." Right. You're going out there and you're talking about what you do, and people start sliding into your DMs, sending you text messages, emails. So we, we basically teach people to build this like catch-all net where you're omnipresent and you can catch these people and these leads coming in from all these different directions. Your um, That character becomes a funnel of its own. It sure does. It's just bringing people in. You're also building a personal brand. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, going to have residual lasting value to you as an entrepreneur. Whether you maybe sell that business that mm-hmm. you're currently working on and yeah. in. How often are you telling guys, hey, you need to work on your business, not All in time. your business? All the what, time. Break, break down Cliff Notes version mm-hmm. what that means because yeah. that's – a lot of gurus say yep. that shit. That's one of the whole reasons I have the damn time study I put everybody through. It's in my book too. Yeah. Okay? So yep. for seven ninety nine on Amazon, you can get it. Yes. Um, you go in there and it's a two-week-long time study, right? We discussed it earlier. But that time study is is showing you – those low dollar activities, that ten and the hundred dollar an hour buckets, those are all tasks of you working in your business, not on your business. Okay. The thousand and ten thousand dollar an hour tasks are you working on your business. So working in your business, you know, if you're a roofer, are you getting up on the roof and swinging a hammer? No. Guess what? You're working in your business. Yeah. If you are, you have problems. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, same thing for a plumber. Uh, same thing for a, an attorney, even. You know, so just because you own the law firm doesn't mean you have to process every piece of paper yeah. in that firm. Sure. So this 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 whole technician theory that I use applies to all of that. Yeah. No, I think that's really important. I think that's where losing the forest for the trees, if you're mm-hmm. working, if you're an owner operator, can be really tough, especially if you got a few enterprises going. Can yeah. you talk a little bit? Because this is another guru, um, like often used phrase you got to have multiple streams of income sure. and when i see young dudes doing that mm-hmm. they they they're not focused on one thing they're not robert green mastery that's an awesome book i'm sure mm-hmm. you've read that one they're not mastering anything yep. so they don't even have one solid you know stream of income and then they're over here trying i'm going to go flip a house i'm going to okay. go flip a car i'm going to i'm going to sell ammo on yeah. facebook and if we just hold focus on, if anybody you, has ammo, please connect with me. I have a, <laughs> a plug for you at the end. I found it. It's it's an amazing plug. Um, is that a a, a, a myth and a misnomer? Yeah, people just don't get focused. You know, bottom line is this, and this is this is just like a cliche saying that I'm sure you've heard read oh, you've read in a couple books. But you got to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm-hmm. So what's the main business you have, right? And you also have to get pretty clear with yourself, too. If that main business you have is something that you cannot get to work, well, then you're going to have to go find something else to do, buddy. Sure. I hate to break it to you. Yeah. I was watching Shark Tank the other day. <laughs> Gives everybody the wrong impression of uh, how, how to get an idea funded. But yeah, it's but... a good show for kids. Kendra Scott, are you familiar? Mm-hmm. The jewelry gal? Yes. So she started. She's. I think she just sold that thing for 500 and something million. Um yeah, it's crazy. She started out making hats. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bet we're, everyone's going to wear hats again, yeah. she said. And the hats weren't selling, mm-hmm. and they still weren't selling. Years and years, she's she's spending savings to keep this shop open. But there was something selling in her store. She just didn't realize that she was too close. It was her jewelry mm-hmm. that she was making. So when she realized that, had like that lightning strike moment, yep. shifted, pivoted, Probably swallowed her pride because when an idea doesn't work, when a venture fails, it's mm-hmm. not fun. It just is what it is. Yeah. And then she rose above, developed the jewelry set. Have you had a venture where it's just not working? I've yep. tried everything where you had to say, I'm going to pack it in. Yeah. So uh, my first business I did, 
Uh, yeah, you're right was, about that. Yeah, it was just me being yeah. an asshole and not knowing how to do business. <laughs> uh, but go back to the very beginning of Top Class Installations. So my partner and I start this business, and we start the same way that I started my first business. We, we're both car audio installers. So people are coming to us, hey, I need a remote start. Cool, we'll do it. Hey, I need a uh, drop-down TV. Cool. Mm. Hey, I need an audio system. Cool, we'll do it. And we're saying yes to all of this this stuff, yeah. and it's great because it's cash money. Right. Right. And we're still doing GPS work. And the problem was, and this is when the light bulbs really started to go off in my head, and this is when we started to get some coaches who were like, you guys are fucking idiots. Look what you're doing here. It took the outside perspective right. to, to, to show it. So come wintertime in New York, it gets pretty cold, and remote starts start selling like hotcakes. So we do anywhere from four, five, six remote starts per day each. Wow. Still being a technician, you're probably pulling in 200 bucks profit per vehicle. So you make some good, good sure. cash money in yeah, a day. Absolutely. You're busting your ass. But here's the problem. So I'm going in, and let's say we make three grand in a day between the two of us. Okay. I'm going in here. I'm working all day long. Mind you, I had to go get the supplies the day before. Mm. And the night before, I'm up to probably midnight prepping all of the harnesses for the vehicles that we're going to install into. Okay. So it's not just, hey, we worked for six hours here today. No, it's more like 12 hours we put into this. So gotcha. break it down hourly. And it's really not that great. On top of that, we're so focused on doing a damn work that we miss the email that comes over for the $30,000 fleet install. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Perspective. Install a remote start in a vehicle, 30 or so connections to a vehicle. Okay? Like, you got to know what you're doing. Sure. Okay? Install a GPS tracking device into a vehicle. It's either a Y cable that plugs into the diagnostics port underneath the dash or it's three wires that you splice into the vehicle. So fast and scalable. Yeah, so 75 <laughs> bucks per install, roughly, 30 minutes of your time, or two hours or three hours or four hours of your time, and a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And now talk about training the technician. Sure. You know, if I'm training the GPS install tech, it's going to be a lot faster that guy's up to speed versus the guy I'm training to install an elaborate electrical system. Gotcha. Back to your reading thing. When you, so you connect with that first coach, yep. uh, coach mentor, um, he says, we got to get you reading. You mm -hmm. figure out, oh, oh, I can, I can do audio book. Did you, before that all started to happen and click and you, that thirst for knowledge that, that blaze got re lit, lit in you again, mm -hmm. did you ever think I'm going to be an author <laughs> one Funny day? Funny story. I mean, or, or was that something that came later? Yeah, so it was pretty soon after that, maybe towards the tail end of the first coach, maybe uh, maybe it was the beginning of the second coach I was working with at the time in New York. Um, audiobook, whole day out on the road, do a bunch of GPS installs, ride back home, and I wind up finishing an audiobook as I'm backing my truck into the driveway. And I say to myself, and I'll never forget this, I say to myself, wow, it'd be really cool to write a book one day. Ah. I literally smacked myself in the back of the head and said, come on, bro, it's just a pipe dream. Huh. Fast forward, I think it was two years from there, yeah. and there's a book. The The process, and by the way, Thomas's best-selling book is called Unfuck Your Business. That's right, Mothers and Fathers. <laughs> How'd you decide on that name, first of all? Just looking for something to grab attention? Yeah, we wrote the book, and the editor I was working with at the time, um, it's kind of like, a, and I feel the same way about my kids. I, I had a couple of names picked out for yeah, my kids, right? but me, me and the wife had discussed, hey, we're not going to name the kid until we actually get to see the kid sure. hold the kid. Sure, that makes sense. And that's the same thing that happened with the book. So really? we had a couple of things that we were kind of thinking about, and once the book was written and had been, I think it was through the second or third round of edits, uh, she hit me. She's like, I think I have the title for your book. She goes, but... Uh, it's going to be a yeah, dicey one. Right. And she, she, she threw it at me. And she's like, uh, I know it's a little rough. She goes, but I think it really fits the book. Yeah. And I was like, it fuck does. it, let's go. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Uh, it, it does fit the book. I mean, do, do you have a, a career bucket list? And was uh, being a, a high-level executive coach on that bucket list? Nope. Never even thought in my mind. Really? Until kind of the last two years – yeah, ish. I'd say about that's about right. Would you say that the that the um, light bulb, you know, it's pardon the pun. There's broken light bulbs on there. Did the light bulb <laughs> went off once you started seeing how well the coaching was working for you? That you were mm -hmm. like, man, 
this could really, I, I really like this. I could really help other people. Is that kind yeah. of where it, people, so I, again, I go through the program, you know, I start to become the attractive character in the GPS tracking space. People start reaching out to me. Hey, I've got a tracking install company in, uh, you know, Alabama and I'm running into this issue. Okay. Let's hop on a call and I'll, and, and within 10, 15 minutes, I'd help this guy, uh, build a, a ramp over the roadblock. Hmm. Like, all right, cool. Was he paying you for good. that? No, I'm not getting paid at all. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just giving. There's the mm-hmm. value piece. Okay? Yep. I'm helping people, and I'm realizing, like, oh, this is pretty cool, and it's not difficult. Like, it just comes pretty naturally to me. Sure. And the reason it came naturally to me is because the problem that this guy's having, I've personally been there already. Yeah. Right. So, okay, cool. Let's let's give some advice, and then I go and I start seeing some other people. Like, holy shit, this guy's making that much money in a year, and he's just doing the same thing I'm doing. Like, hold on a second. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be giving away these these free right. coaching sessions or these calls. Yeah. Uh, and that's when I started to get really intentional with it and started to speak to Ryan about it, and here we are. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because you found yourself on numerous stages talking to people about tightening up their systems and processes mm-hmm. and working on themselves. Yeah. The time you put in on yourself is as important as the time you put into your business. Do you find that the more free time, like mm-hmm. – um, what we were talking about right at the beginning, the snowmobiling on motocross bikes, yeah. hunting, things like that, mm-hmm. uh, help you and give you clarity and you get g- ideas and revitalize to the yeah. point where without that now, you would not have the success mm-hmm. that you do on the work side. It's mandatory. Because a know? lot of young guys, man, they- Work, 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 work. I'm still that way. I did that. And I'm older than you. Yeah. And I ballooned <laughs> up to 300 pounds and herniated six discs in my back and yeah. I was spending three weeks in, in, in bed because I couldn't, I couldn't work. Yeah. That was ultimately what killed my first business. So, you know, you can't just focus on the work, 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 work. There has to be, and I, I think balance is bullshit, okay, personally, but you have to put some time and effort and energy intentionally into all of the important areas of life every day. Be sure. grateful. Work on yourself physically. Work on your mindset. So you got to educate and, and learn each and every day. Right. Okay, and it doesn't have to be something crazy. Could you? It could be you opening a book and reading two pages. It's a five minute podcast in the morning. Okay, whatever you can get in. Sure. Right. It's you intentionally spending time with loved ones. Okay, and we we call it group at Break Free Academy. You have to put time into your group intentionally each and every day, and your group is your employees, your coworkers, your family at home, your friends. Uh, vendors, clients, you have to intentionally go out there and, and you have to be a better friend to your friends than they are to you. Mm. How important is home life to business life? I've, uh, <laughs> the gentleman I was uh, visiting with before I came to meet you, he mm-hmm. always says this almost every time I, I uh, see him. There are no business problems. There are only personal problems that then end up affecting the business, which, you know, yeah. I'd never heard it put that way, but it's true because mm-hmm. if things are failing at, it, on the business side, there's usually a, a personal route to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that family things and balance it. It's tough, but yeah. balance and keeping every everything good and invest mm-hmm. that time. It's I mean, so important. Sure it is. And you're. You get guys going, man. I I'm falling apart at home, and I'm yeah. falling apart at business. What do you what What do you tell them when so they come to you? With we that? see one of the biggest things, and I've seen this in, in my life. And this isn't just family. This isn't just your wife or your husband. This applies to anybody who you care about in business. Okay, as we self develop ourselves as humans, we begin to grow at a rapid pace. Most will call it like that hockey stick. If you look at it on a graph, it like you're just hockey sticking up, huh. right? So here we are. This is your wife down here. This is you. You're both going along life in this path, okay? You start to self-develop, and here comes that hockey stick, but your wife is is coming along at this basic level. Yeah. So from here to here, there's a chasm. As time gr- goes and you learn more and more, you guys grow apart like a motherfucker. Yeah. So it's up to you if you really care about that person. And that, that bottom person could be a business partner, could be a wife, could be a mom, a dad. You have to you have to bring them into some of the things you're doing. So if you're developing yourself, start speaking some of that language to them. Start bringing them into a room where you're not the only one speaking that language. Because after a while, people are going to tune you out. That's what I've seen happen in my own personal life. Like yeah. You start talking about all this crazy entrepreneurial shit, right. and everyone's like, oh, fuck, here goes Tom again. <laughs> but once I brought my wife into that room and she realized that it wasn't just me talking this crazy shit, she's like, oh, now I get it. Interesting. Yeah, so you need to – you may not ever be at the same level as them, 
because you may be a little bit more advanced and that's fine, but at least bring them along for the ride. Yeah, that makes sense. If you care about them. How important is it to you, and this is a part of the mindset thing we were talking about earlier, to stay positive and that the words that come out of your mouth and the words that you write or text or email yeah. are positive at home mm-hmm. and at the office because the you know you've I'm sure you've read the Four Agreements. It's a short but great book. That black magic, mm. those 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 dark words, that negativity, man. What comes out, um, you know, it, it can damage. Sure is can. it is that something you're super intentional about? Yeah. Even when the chips are down, maybe you're mm-hmm. still speaking positivity. Yeah, I I find that I go in uh, uh, I'll go in a little dark hole for a bit. Just being completely honest, transparent. You know, everyone has their days for sure. Okay, and. Uh, we call it the reset period at Break Free Academy. You have to realize, like, oh shit, something's going on here. Okay, reset, take a minute, you know, refocus. Maybe take ten minutes, quiet, go in a quiet area, do some breathing exercises, and kind of figure out what the hell's going on here. And when you reset, then come out of it and say, okay, enough with the negativity. Let's let's kind of flip the switch here and keep it on a more positive level. Another thing that I've done, again, it's all about intentionality, is. You kind of got to you, you have to audit your circle. Hmm. So you've got a list of friends, family, relatives, and people who are just around you on a daily basis. Write them down on the list, and I, I play the stoplight game with them: red, yellow, green. <laughs> if they're negative people, most of the time they get a red light. If they're kind of in the middle, they get a yellow light. If they're positive, good vibe humans, they get a green light. And this is probably one of the shittiest, most difficult exercises you'll ever go through as a person. Yeah. Okay. The people who have the red light next to them, you need to intentionally either eliminate them from your life or stop spending time with them. The problem here is that for most of us who are entrepreneurs and looking to become the most elite versions of ourselves, that the people we care about the most sometimes fall into that red light zone. Yeah. High school friends, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. So it's a real tough pill to swallow when you realize the people that you've surrounded yourself with the most have all been negative influences on you for the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Do you ever see where that hockey stick takes off and then this never, and and they just mm-hmm. end up having to go their separate ways because there's yep. just not a like-minded this there anymore? They're not. One of the reasons I exit my business. Gotcha. When you're running your own business, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of stress, right? A lot of anxiety. What are some ways that you've combated that in the past that haven't been super healthy and sustainable and some ways that you now... Drinking alcohol. Yeah, man. <laughs> and eating food. Yeah. Two things I love to do to this day, <laughs> but I do realize that I can't drink 12 beers a night and eat like a fat bastard and expect my business to thrive the next day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, booze is... A depressant. Sure it is. So if things are, are going bad and then you, you take a drink, you feel better for a minute. Mm-hmm. But then the residual is uh, the back end of that is is ugly, right? Yeah. Um, that's something that you just realize yourself like, I got this is this isn't serving me. I got to take yeah, a different that, route. It really hit me. And we spoke about it earlier, you know, uh, come May of, of this past year and just kind of sitting in quarantine at home and yeah. eating and drinking more than ever. Right. And it's like, oh shit, like this, this isn't good. I, I have a choice here. I can go down this path or this path. Sure. I can either continue drinking the Coronas and whatever else is in the house and eating the Oreos and the pizza because New York pizza is pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, right. It is. Um, or I could go to work on myself. Yeah. But in order to go to work for myself, I need to 100% commit, like fully commit. And there is no excuses, there is no bullshit and do it. Yeah. 75 hard's a commitment. That's for damn sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, no doubt about it. What do you like about Texas now that you're down here? Neither of us are from here, but we got got here as fast (laughs) as we could. Yeah. I should have moved here five years ago. It's like uh, just a complete just culture and just environment change. Hmm. The mindset here is ask forgiveness, not permission in Texas. It's very pro-business. You know, um, most of my friends and family uh, back in New York, you know, New York is like this tremendously democratic state. I mean, the, you the don't majority, say. <laughs> yeah, the majority of the people who actually live in a state aren't that way. Most most Long Islanders and most people in upstate New York, are, are they lean more to the right. Hmm. I'm not saying all the way to the right. Right. Okay, but the population in New York City is so dense. 
that's where the majority of the Democratic Party gets all their numbers from. Sure. Okay, and I'm not trying to make this into a political debate over here, but that's just the truth. I mean, yeah. Most of my friends and family are, are blue collar, hard workers, police officers, and so on and so forth. And they kind of think the same way that you and I do. Mm-hmm. The difference is you and I both have the balls to move here to Texas and get away from the crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I came from a very liberal state as well, the state of Washington, and uh, it's beautiful, but uh, running a business up there is is not yeah. what it is here, man. It's a whole different it's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah. Well, man, uh, if if uh, anybody watching, especially the young guys and gals who watch this, mm-hmm. are interested in reaching out to you, um, what's the what's the best way for them to connect with Two you? Two places. Well, you can find me on social media all you want. Just search my name. Just know there's no H in it. It's Thomas. Gotcha. Uh, T-O-M-A-S. Uh, connect with Thomas.com and head over to ThomasKeenan.com. Both awesome. of those places have all my contact info listed there. And the book, there's a link for the book on yep. ThomasKeenan.com. ThomasKeenan.com or if you just go to Amazon and search it, you'll find it as well. Beautiful. Thank you for your time, man. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. That was awesome. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, Thomas dropped all of his contact info right there at the end. Go to his website, order his book. It is a great book, especially if you're an entrepreneur or small business owner. I'd also love to know what you think about these podcasts. Drop a comment below or hit me on Instagram anytime at Jess from the Northwest. If you'd like to do some work together, you need help with an insurance claim, you can always hit me at live at autographconstruction.com and we'll see you guys next time.